Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides, and I have a shiny treat for you right behind me. This is a 427 Cobra. Now, when we say 427 Cobra, this is not an original 427 Cobra. This is a replica. The reason why you might say, hold on a second, why would somebody have a replica of a car? The original 427 Cobras are worth millions upon millions of dollars. And you might see one at these events, but you're probably not just because people have those tucked away collecting dust somewhere. What's nice though is there's lots of companies that make very reputable uh, replicas of the 427 Cobra. And what's great is, is that it allows you to be able to see the car and experience the car even though it's not 100% the actual thing. So let me give you a little bit of history about the 427 Cobra. So Carroll Shelby got with Ford and they wanted a performance car to go up against the Corvette because guess what? The Ford Thunderbird wasn't cutting it. What they did was is they found a company in England called AC. Carroll got AC and Ford to merge together. The AC Bristol body with a big Ford V8. Now, originally the Cobras were 289s. What that means is it's a 289 small block engine, V8 engine. These are the 427s that came later. So the car got more horsepower and it got wider. The original 289 Cobras are much more narrow than this car is. But even though it's a replica, I've looked it over. It's really spot on, and I'm really digging the chrome wrap that's on this car. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back of this classic 427. So this design, when we say timeless in the auto industry, this design is timeless. My father lusted after these. I had posters of these cars in my room growing up. In my classroom, I have a poster of a 427 Cobra. So it doesn't matter how old you are, what generation you're from. This is truly a timeless design. One thing you'll notice about a 427 is those extra large fenders. That's something because with extra large fenders come extra fat tires. The tires have to be tucked in, so that's why they flare out the fenders. That's a difference between a 289 and the 427. Now, depending on what company you go with when you go to get your replica 427, there's gonna be a lot of things and customers can customize them any which way you want. So you'll never actually see two replica Cobras that look exactly the same. This one obviously stands out because it's got a chrome wrap on it, but there's other things that owners can do from roll bars to different bumpers. What I like that the owner did on this is that he kept it clean and simple out back. It's got the simple bumper at here, small taillights, and that's it. That's all you need. Let's go ahead and work our way to the side here. When it comes to the replica 427s, one thing that really stands it apart is your gap between the top of the wheel and the fender. Some of the cheaper, less known companies, they have these cars sitting way too high. If you look at how the car sits, if you park this next to a real 427 Cobra, this is how the car sits. It's supposed to have that tight of a gap between the fender and the tire. I really, really love the traditional knockoff wheels. The way that these wheels work is there's no actual lug nuts. There's a center spinner here and you have to knock it off with a mallet to get the wheel to come off. That is a styling cue of the 427 Cobras. These cars were meant to go up against Corvettes and race them on the racetrack, which guess what? Corvette got their butt handed to them plenty of time by Carroll Shelby and the 427 Cobras. Now, one thing that this owner did that I'm not the biggest fan is it does have the exhaust coming out the side but it's not a traditional side pipe exhaust. With these 427s, I like to see the header coming out from the fender here and the nice side pipe. This one's cool though, because it does have the exhaust coming out the side and it does clean up the side of the car, which is nice. Let me go ahead and show you inside. If you look inside the car, you can see that the interior is really looking like a 427. Here's another area where owners of these replicas can do whatever they want. This person kept it very simple. I love the simple gauges. I like the teak wood steering wheel. It does look like that traditional classic 427 steering wheel. I like that where the shifter's located. 
One thing to know about the shifter is that it's actually turned around. Normally the shifter would be at a back angle. On these cars, the shifter's at a front angle because of how tight the room is. Another thing you'll notice is that this owner actually put the battery behind the rear seats. If you're wondering why would somebody do that, it's for weight balance. Why have that weight out the front of the car? Bring it near the rear. So when it comes to the interior, I'm gonna give this car really a B plus when it comes for that traditional 427 styling. Definitely the stance. It's getting an A. If you look up here, I really love on the 427s, the vented gills here. That's a nice styling touch. And as you can see, you can see the gap between the fender. Now, normally on a 289, that fender, extra fender is not going to be there. But you can see how the space is on it. Let's go ahead and work our way to the front. Here's another location where when it comes to a replica, you can make it or break it. A lot of times, owners of replicas will put these extra bumpers, chrome pieces on here. I think it just muddies up the design. I like the way this owner kept it clean and simple. We have the larger bumper reds. Remember, off the rear, we saw the smaller ones. Here's the larger bumper reds. And this is all clear and open for all that air to get to the radiator. Like I said, a timeless design. One thing I wish the owner would have done is put a traditional hood on here. A traditional 427 Cobra hood has that hood scoop to ram feed air into the engine compartment of that huge V8. Now, when I say 427, remember, we're referring to the size of the engine. That's 427 cubic inches. And these cars, depending on how well massaged they are, can put out well over 500 horsepower. And as you can see, this thing is as light as can be. So with high horsepower and with lightness, this is definitely going to be one hell of a performer on and off the track. Like always, guys, these are the things that I like to bring to you. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit the subscribe button. If you have something that you want to see on my channel, make sure you leave it in the comment section. Check out my Instagram. There's very specific and unique photos that I post on my Radies Rides Instagram page. And like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.